This is a $6,000 cinema camera, used on big Hollywood productions like Suicide Squad, The Matrix or the new Batman movie. And this is a $60 lens I bought off eBay, also used in the new Batman movie. But why would a big Hollywood production put a cheap old lens on a fancy high-end camera? It definitely has a lot of character, but is it really worth all the quirks and workarounds it has? And what would the perfect rig look like for using this photo lens on a video production? This cheap Russian copy of the Carl Zeiss Biota lenses is quite old, so why would you even want to shoot on it in the first place? Well, the famous Swelly Bokeh has implemented itself as the vintage look for many photographers, but also the flares give the Helios a unique signature look. It is this specific look that makes this lens sit in pretty much every second camera bag you'll see. But taking photos isn't quite the same as shooting video and there are a few things that you will have to keep in mind. You should know that the Helios 442 is the most produced lens ever made. That means that not one, but three different factories were producing this lens back between the late 50s and early 90s. So there are some variations of the build quality. The best is said to come from KMZ and the worst from Valdai, while ones from MMZ sit somewhere in between. There are also variations of it like the Helios 44M that produces pretty much the same look but just has a different overall design. Long story short, if you get this lens keep in mind that there's a big range of build quality depending on the year and the factory that the lens was made in. The one I have from Valdai for example has some play to its individual parts potentially affecting the image when touching the lens for pulling focus or adjusting the aperture. It's also leaking oil on the aperture blades and the optics which can result in reduced contrast, sharpness and color reproduction. You should also keep in mind that the Helios obviously doesn't have any sort of stabilization and is pretty lightweight. So at 58mm it's really hard to shoot smooth handheld shots without a lot of jitter and I would recommend using a tripod. So with all that said, let's rig this up to get the most out of this lens. First, we put on a speed booster. So we transform our Komodo into a full frame camera and enhance the swirly bokeh that gets more the further you go to the edges of the image. Having a wider frame also helps with handheld shots. Second, let's put on a matte box with a variable ND filter so we don't get too much unintentional flares and can open up the aperture for creative purposes. And third, this looks stupid. But let's see what results we can get with this setup. That does look pretty nice. Before we jump into the conclusions, I want to thank you for your support on this channel. It's been growing pretty fast the last couple of weeks and I'm far from done. So if you don't want to miss out on any future projects, make sure to subscribe and help me reach my goal of 1000 subscribers until the end of this year. But now it's conclusion time. As soon as you passed all the challenges that the Helios brings, Using this lens for video productions can give you some crazy characteristic shots. I guess I wouldn't want to shoot a whole movie on it, but you can definitely use it for some shots where it helps you tell your story. And if you want to utilize this look on a bigger production, but are not willing to deal with all the quirks that this lens brings, you can have it rehoused by iron glass to have the same optics in a professional cinema lens housing. However, this will set you back $2000. But if you're running on a small budget, you can definitely spice up your work with just a few deliberate shots on the Helios 442. Bye.